Well, physics forces enthusiasts, uh, we've got three problems here involving Newton's first law. Can you remember Newton's first law? If you can't, it's that if there is no resultant force, then the velocity will remain constant. That also includes being stationary. So if no resultant force is acting on a body, then it will remain at the same velocity, the same speed and direction. So this is the first of three problems, a bit of an easy one. Uh, after each problem, you'll see the solution, so you might want to pause the videos and tr attempt the question and see how you did. Uh, this problem, we've got a cowboy uh, pulling on a rope, trying to move a horse, but the horse is not moving, damn it! And the force he's pulling with is 200 newtons at an angle of 30 degrees. You've got to work out the horizontal and the vertical component. This is the most important thing in any force problems. You've got two things to do. Number one, always draw a free body force diagram. Number two, you resolve the vectors into horizontal and vertical components, as in this problem. So pause the video, see if you can solve the problem, and then we'll check out the solution. And here's the solution. So we've got a free body force diagram with uh, everything labelled, so it basically becomes a trigonometry program, uh, problem. We've got a right angled triangle here, so we're going to use the Sokotoa rule. Uh, to figure out what the horizontal component is. So Fx, uh, horizontal component of F, would be cos 30 times 200, which gives you a value of 187.94 newtons. And the vertical component, up and down the way there, on the left-hand side of the diagram, sine 30 times 200, which will give you a vertical, uh, a vertical force of 68.40 newtons. Next problem. We've got a gymnast holding himself an iron cross in gymnastics and the angle between the wires supporting the rings is at 12 degrees from the vertical on each side. There's a mass of 75 kilograms and you have to calculate the tension in each wire. So pause, pause the video and see how you, how you get on. So here's the solution. Uh, first thing, you draw your free body force diagram, and we have the tension in his arms and the ropes, acting at an angle of 12 degrees, and then weight acting down the way. Now, the gymnast is stationary, so the resultant force in horizontal and vertical planes is zero. It's not moving. So, we know that his weight must be equal to an upwards force of tension, so the vertical component of tension there. So, FV, the force up the way, must be equal to W. Now, because there's two ropes, that force will be evenly distributed because the angle is equal between the two wires there. And we're trying to figure out tension. So we know Fv is equal to half of the weight. So if it's 100 newtons down, it must be 100 newtons up, divided into two ropes, which would be 50 newtons each. In this case, we know that the weight is uh, 75 times g, which is 735.75 newtons. Therefore, dividing that into 2, or timesing the tension by 2, is going to be able to, us to figure that out. So, you can either divide the weight by 2, or you can use 2t equals 735.75 divided by cos 20, which, according to trigonometry, will give us the magnitude of the force of t. So, figuring this out, we figure out that tension is worth 391.48 newtons. Right, last problem. We've got a really creepy looking cat sliding down an inclined tin roof. Constant velocity of 1.3 meters per second. A couple of questions. Which of Newton's law is the cats obeying and why? And what is the force of friction acting on the cat from the roof? For three marks. So pause the video, see if you can Okay, here's the solution. Which of Newton's laws is the cat obeying? It's obviously Newton's first law because it's moving at a constant speed uh, and there is no external force, and it, so it'll keep moving at a constant speed until an external force acts on it. A little bit creepy. Right, so we've got a free body force diagram, and we can see that force of friction is acting at an angle. The resultant force, or the normal force acting on the cat, is also at an angle. So what you do is get your page, a really sneaky way to do this, and turn your page until we go F and R, the horizontal and vertical. That means we've only got one force acting at an angle to solve. We'll have rotated our page the same amount as the incline of the, uh, the tin roof there. 
So I think going from here, turning your page literally anti-clockwise about 30 degrees will mean it will look like this, makes things an awful lot easier. From there, we need to resolve the uh, force of friction. Now we know that it's moving at constant speed, so that component of weight acting to the right in that middle diagram there uh, will be equal to friction. So if we can figure out that bottom part of weight, it will be equal to the force of friction. So we know that the cat has a mass of 3.5 kgs, he times that by 9.81 and we'll get a weight of 33.3 .3 newtons. Uh, force of friction there is equal, uh, well that the horizontal component of weight will be equal to friction acting at 30 degrees. So sine 30 times 33.3 .3 gives us a force of friction equal to 16.65 newtons. Thank you very much. Still a bit creepy.